What's happening? Back again, Vash Lombardi. It is draft season. Um, so for all of my cowboy constituents, y'all, y'all should know in case y'all didn't, I'm working very hard on draft stuff because that's what I do. That's what I did first. Uh, I don't like mock drafts because those are whack, but I do know that most of my constituents like mock drafting. So we're gonna talk about some potential first round candidates uh for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, this is gonna mostly be just kind of what I think, but um I'm gonna go to the goofy little mock drafts and see who they got us going with uh so i think that's a good way to get the mock draft crowd involved because i know most of y'all read those and then y'all come to me anyway and say vach what do you think about this guy this is me telling you what i think about this guy or you know whoever whatever so we got six uh we got six names up here six prospects uh that i've been mostly seeing and i kind of agree with it right now combine's gonna change things of course we're gonna wait for somebody to get caught with some weed or some or like a gun in a car or something like that so the the draft board could change again but it's just what we're talking about as of now and i've been seeing a lot of xavier mckinney from alabama uh he's a safety right <clears throat> thing about him though and, and there's another safety on his list i'm gonna talk about him next but think thing about mckinney i think in my personal opinion he is a strong safety um that's pretty athletic though right i don't think he's a free but he can play some free in a pinch but what i think he does really well is i think he he plays in the box and while he's down there i think he covers tight ends really well he can give you some work in the nickel if that's what you want um he's about six foot and can run well and in the land of db six foot and run well works um it it, it it works magic in terms of drafting dbs or whatever that's really what we're looking for so combine nerds help me out uh tell me what his experience exact measurements are because trust me i don't google them um <clears throat> but yes he is a strong safety that's athletic enough so what that means is, is that if you're playing like a like a cover two scheme he can be a guy that can not only play down in the box and cover uh you know like cover one cover three stuff but when it is cover two cover four he can give you value as a deep halves or a deep quarters guy he's not a guy that's going to be a be a fish out of water and my example for that is think about jonathan abram right from last year from mississippi state jonathan abram as a safety as a box safety right he was a tackler he was a hitter he was that kind of guy but he wasn't a, a a really good coverage dude you know he wasn't gonna go cover some nickel um receiver and he wasn't gonna play too too much deep for you he could but he wasn't the best at it i think xavier mckinney does those things but he gives you other value in terms of his athleticism now this is the interesting part with the safety conversation because Xavier McKinney has been mocked to the Cowboys more and he is considered by a lot to be the better player. This is this is the only caveat in that debate. I think if you're looking for us for a free safety, I think Grant Delpit is the better of the two in terms of what you're asking to do there right xavier mckinney is more versatile he can play strong better he can play both i don't think grant delpit can play both but i think what he does as a free safety he does it better um than xavier mckinney would so it's basically what you're looking for in this um in this kind of debate conversation or whatever right so there are some people that were kind of down on on Delpit because I think we're evaluating him the wrong way when I say we I'm talking about everybody as a community we're looking at him and we're saying things like oh he's not the best tackler in the world he's willing but he's not super tackle guy or 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 I don't want somebody that can't tackle a you know like a Najee Harris type of running back like a big bruisey type of running back on the next level that's fair but he's free safety in my opinion if you play Grand Delpit at free safety and he gets run over by some running back that means 10 other people got run over by that running back right if you evaluate him as a box safety of course he's gonna miss on some of those marks because he's not as good doing some box safety things as Xavier McKinney is right but if you look at um Grant Delpit as a free safety you take a look at his 2018 film his 2019 film nine Delpit uh seven Delpit those are two different Delpits the jersey number whatever if you look at those two guys in terms of getting hands on the football like pass deflections INTs um just just reading the quarterback's eyes really well he really has a feel of recognizing route combinations in front of him and reading quarterback's eyes and things like that just getting around the football in general I think he's better at the 
things like that. Can he play in the box and a pinch if you needed him? If if you needed him to, absolutely. Um, can he cover uh, tight ends or so? Sure, he can do that. I think he got enough size and length to do that. When I say size, I mean relative, like like height. <laughs> you know, he ain't the the biggest, most swole cat in the world. You know, you can watch your own film and kind of deduce that or whatever. But if I had my pick of the two. I don't know. I'll do a safety ranking video later, but um, that's just my thoughts on those guys. I think either one of those guys could be safety number one. I haven't made up my mind yet. Um, the third prospect that I've been seeing a lot in Cowboy rankings is Henry Ruggs. Sure. Um, let's just I'm, I'm going to leave my personal thoughts and opinions out of all these picks or whatever so i'll just get into the henry ruggs conversation later on but henry ruggs if you're going to get him he's a guy that can absolutely stretch the field vertically he's probably going to be a 4-2 guy him or there's another receiver from tsu uh, tcu uh named jalen rager him or jalen rager uh, is going to have the uh, fastest 40 they're both 4-2 guys early 4-3 guys so we'll figure that out whenever combine happens or whatever but um henry ruggs could possibly be the fastest guy in this draft but he's not just fastest guy in the draft in a john ross kind of way you know what i mean it just just uh or like a miko hartman kind of way to where all he can really do is run fast like he does give you value moving sideways he is kind of quick he runs routes a little better than what a john ross would be i think he's a lot more healthy he's a he's a he's a little more stout um than a than a than a john ross is and, and i'm saying that because those are the comparisons that i'm seeing him being compared to right he's a four he's going to be the fastest 40 guy he's john ross or he's the fastest 40 guy he's tyreek hill right it's like the highest he could be is tyreek the lowest he could be is is john ross that's the conversation i've been mostly you know mostly seeing or whatever i don't think he's dynamic uh in terms of quickness as 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 tyreek hill i think tyreek hill is a more complete receiver than john ross but if you want to if you want to just be four too fast and you really want to put that defense on his heels, stretch that damn thing out, um, line Henry Ruggs up at Z or something and just let him run faster than people. That's what he brings to the table. Um, but yeah, that's him. AJ Epinesa, which, which is interesting, right? Because I've had to grow as a talent evaluator, right? As a draft dude, because I hated um, power rushers. I hate, you know, like like if I'm thinking of a pass rusher or just an edge player, let's say that. If I'm thinking of an edge player, I want somebody that's uh, quick, twitchy, bendy. Like that was my opinion of edge player, right? AJ Epinesa is not those things. But what he is, is he's really close to his man body right now. He's a big old boy. Um, he's super strong. He's a bully. He can play two positions for you. I think he could play left side defensive end. Uh, just le le left side defensive end relative to like strength or whatever so strong side defensive end um but i think he's really good at three tech man i think he really tears up the house at three tech and it, honestly in my opinion he'll be ranked higher if you ranked him as a three tech than you would as an edge guy he's left defensive end sure um but he's you you you'll see him being ranked in the 20s or so like if y'all been watching mock drafts you'll see him at the back or in the middle of the first rounds or whatever i think if he was a three tech he'll be like an early teen guy but um hey if the cowboys are able to get hands on this dude then i would absolutely take him uh put a little ass whoop on the interior and can play some um play some run defense for you at left defensive end i'll take that absolutely CJ Henderson is a cornerback from Florida. He's another guy that I've been seeing in some mocks here. Um, I saw somebody compare him to Greedy Williams. I think that's a bit uh, that's a bit that's a bit much. Um, Greedy Williams is is a fantastic um, man cover corner. Not to say that CJ Henderson is not. Um, I think that's where the comparison comes from, right? Like Greek, uh, Greedy Williams is probably one of the more naturally talented man cover corners that we've seen in the past five or so years. Um, but when you look at CJ Henderson, he may have gotten that, that, um, that comparison because he's really great at man coverage. So that might be what that is. Uh, now, is he a zone cover guy? I think that comes a lot with uh, like his shoulder up type of ability, right? Like, will he be able to see things? How is his IQ? How is his, you know, how is he reading stuff or whatever? That may be where he loses out a little bit. But in terms of his athleticism, in terms of his man coverage ability, I don't know what the Cowboys are going to do in terms of um, the type of players we're looking for with the new coaching staff or whatnot. So it's going to be interesting to really keep up with that. It's, it's going to be fun to keep tabs on it, to see the, the type of team that we are. But if we're going to do a lot of man cover stuff, then I don't have a problem with C.J. Henderson being one of our cornerback guys. 
of of course this list would be a lot easier if uh free agency happened already so we got to wait till march to really get a good idea about what's going to happen with byron what's going to happen with amari cooper um you know randall randall uh randall cobb and you know some of the some of the d linemen that we got so that's going to answer a lot of questions and that'll really uh you know set us up for you know draft content or whatever so like like we'll see about cj henderson but if we're in a situation where we really need a cornerback um and byron walks and cheeto and jordan lewis are your first corners and we ain't got no nickel guys then i don't have a problem with drafting cj henderson uh in the first round at number 17 and the last one i put this last uh because it's it's really a a dice roll on whether it's going to happen or not i think the first five picks are a lot more realistic than this one but uh javon kenlaw and, and I think most of the people I see mocking Javon Kenlaw to the Cowboys are Cowboy fans that really want Javon Kenlaw. I don't think he falls to 17. I think early in the draft process, you had a shot. Uh, maybe if the draft was in December, you probably would have had the opportunity to do that. But Javon Kenlaw, uh, you know, people been watching film on him. He showed up to the Senior Bowl, beat the hell out of everybody's son, and um, he's probably gonna go to come go to the combine and be faster than a lot of people. He, he's he's gonna show up and and be super athletic for 315 or so pounds, however much the hell he weigh. Um, so I mean, look, man, I don't want to say what can't happen. I seen Laramie Tunzel get get drafted in the in the teens when he was supposed to be the best player off the board. You know what I mean? You never know who's gonna get a gun put under their seat in terms of draft, uh, you know, draft day shenanigans or whatever. But uh, assuming everything stays uh, within you know within the legal ramifications or whatever, like Javon Kenlaw, it should be gone by the time the Cowboys are on the clock. But these other seven or so guys should be there. So I encourage y'all to watch film on them. Uh, I have a Ken Law film session out now. I got a Grand Delpit film session that's coming out. Let me check my days. According to my schedule, the Grant Delpit film session should be out tomorrow if I drop this on Friday. So uh, y'all just be prepared for that. Um, and as for the rest of them, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll 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 see if I need to drop some film. And of course, all that film's gonna be all 22 whenever you get to it. All right. Um, that's it, man. So I'm still trying to do uh, content for my cowboy constituents in the middle of draft season. So y'all pray for me. Um, don't forget about my Patreon. We're giving away free merch on that thing. So follow me on Twitter, V O C H L O M B A R D I. And y'all hold it down for the Doski Woskin and Peace Kiwiski, man. Salute. <laughs>